니네가 나한테 이렇게 했어? 나 이렇게 힘들 때 니네가 나 태워했어? 하지마? 여기 왔다. 야, 니가 뭔데? 니가 뭔데? 나 쓰러졌어. 어, 어. 자, 일어나. heard is an audio recording of a confrontation between the CEO of Spire Entertainment and one of the members of Omega X. Hi everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Many of you who regularly watch my videos know that I don't usually cover cases that are recent or ongoing. My reason behind this is that I like to wait for all the evidence to be released so I can present the issue to you without missing any vital information. This case is an exception as I felt a sense of urgency to report the situation as it is currently happening to seek justice for the boys and to help out the fandom. I first covered Omega X over a year ago to celebrate their debut and it saddens me that this is the follow-up video. For those of you who are not familiar with the group, Omega X is an 11-member boy group that debuted on June 30th, 2021 under Spire Entertainment. Their debut was highly anticipated in the industry as they were formed by an unprecedented concept. Each member in Omega X previously debuted under different inactive or disbanded boy groups and survival shows. Spire Entertainment, the company that formed Omega X, recognized the increased disbandment rate and extended hiatuses of these rookies and less recognized groups due to the pandemic and decided to give them a second chance. Since their debut, the boy group has released four albums, one Rookie of the Year award, and has recently wrapped up their first world tour. And it is this same world tour that brings us to the main reason why I'm making this video. Since the beginning, there were many red flags that foreshadowed the events and situations that would later expose Spire's darkest secrets to the world. This is a timeline of the abuse, mistreatment, and mismanagement of Omega X while working under Spire Entertainment. On July 14th, 2022, Omega X announced their first world tour, Connect, Don't Give Up which would take place in America from September through October. For this tour, Spire announced that they would be partnering up with Code One Entertainment for their North American leg. When the information was first released, some fans of the group decided to bring attention to some concerns they had with Code One managing their North American stops. On June 27th, a Twitter user posted a thread about their experience volunteering for the company. This is what they had to say. This will detail my dealings with Code One Entertainment in efforts to convince Omega X to reconsider using them to manage their tour. I want to warn Spire, OX, and 4X about this company. The user also said that they received information from what they believe is a credible source, that the company is run by two employees from two failed companies that previously shut down. The company was only two months old in March and had a history of failure. The user continued to list other issues they had with the company and implored fans of Omega X to bring this information to the attention of Spire. Omega X kicked off their first leg of their tour in Guadalajara, Mexico on September 16. As I mentioned earlier, the first half of the tour was already a disaster. On top of canceled tour dates, multiple members were unable to perform due to health concerns. As for their North American leg, just days before, fans noticed that the Lawrence, Kansas date no longer appeared on the venue's website. According to Code One Entertainment, the company organizing the tour, the group would perform in Lawrence instead of Kansas City. So fans were shocked and confused when the new act was in place of Omega X on the original date on the venue schedule. They then received a notice that the concert was canceled. Following the cancellation, fans were notified by their respective venues that two other dates were canceled. This was a result of Spire parting ways with Code One and switching promoters to MC Entertainment. On September 30th, MC Entertainment assured fans that they would continue with the dates that were already established and would maintain the same benefits. In addition, to show fans thanks for their support, they would include tickets with new prices and benefits and sell one selfie per person for $20. This was also a short-lived partnership as complications continue to progress. On October 9th, Spire announced that they would no longer be working with MC and released a statement. On October 2, 2022, Omega X members and staff were scheduled to depart Chile for their New York show. 
However, MC Entertainment, who is responsible for Omega X's US tour, canceled their plane tickets to New York without any notice. With the slightest hope of receiving new tickets, all members and staff waited at the airport for six hours. When they finally got the news about retrieving new tickets for an 11.55 p.m. flight on the same day, it was 9.30 p.m. and therefore, all check-in counters for international flights had already been closed. MC Entertainment is avoiding all responsibility regarding upcoming tour schedules and not providing us with any feedback or apologies. This led fans on Twitter to expose both Code 1 and MC Entertainment's poor management and went as far as to call them scammers. Starting from their Louisville concert, Spire would continue to host the remaining tour dates themselves. In a separate post made on the group's fan cafe, they asked fans not to buy selfie tickets from NC Entertainment as they would no longer accept these tickets and would only accept tickets bought from the venue itself. On Facebook, the CEO of Spire posted her side of the situation. The first company that we contacted for the American tour went bankrupt, and the company that took on the tour afterwards was much worse than scammers than we'd heard. When we were receiving our tickets to fly back to Korea, we had to stay up all night fighting them. The tickets that they gave us were on a Filipino airline. The tickets had us flying to Manila after the last LA concert and stopping there for a day's layover before flying back to Korea the next. We asked for a non-stop ticket. They said they'll change it to a non-stop ticket, but that was just the start of their lies. And then, I saw that they canceled the flights to New York and I had to think about a lot. I wondered if we'd be able to trust this promoter and go on a Love & City wide tour. I believe we needed to go back to Korea. But the next day, they changed it to a New York venue and sent us the tickets. And they asked us to send out false statement, saying that it was because the flight was canceled. Since they sent us the tickets, it was right that the performers continue on with the performance, but there was no reason for us to lie. When we arrived in New York, the promoters were not there to pick us up. We packed our bags into buses that they claimed to have sent us. Even though we were exhausted for the past two days, we were just able to complete the New York concert with tears. After finishing the New York concert, I received news of my dad's passing. I had a hard time because I was in a situation where I had to leave the members in this kind of environment and headed back to Korea. I had to work with my laptop on all through the funeral. It went downhill starting from the Atlanta concert where I wasn't able to attend with them. Since the promoters canceled the venue, we had to start with product setting instead of the rehearsal. We told the promoter to sincerely apologize to the artists. We said we would no longer continue working with them if they didn't. Unreasonable and unbelievable situations continued to arise, so I had to make a decision. We'd do it without the promoter, so we began preparing. No one would believe the promoter because they had already broken the contract many times. After completing my dad's funeral, I got on the first flight back to America. That's how we restarted our tour. We began to host a tour without a promoter in order to fulfill the promises with the fans. We were able to give all the MD that were promised to fans and we fulfilled the signed albums and the special promises. Finally, everything returned how it should have been. This statement provoked MC Entertainment to speak up about their experience working with Spire in a now deleted post. Hello, this letter is directly to all Omega X fans. We would like to let you know what a horrible week we had as a company. In the 13 years we have been working with artists, this has been the worst experience working with the company. After weeks ago, after one of the people in charge of Spire Entertainment contacted us why the US promoter at the time, Code One, was not doing their job right, we as a company agreed to invest in the US tour for the fans. At this time, we had nothing clear. The day they had to leave Chile, they did not want to leave on different flights to New York and did not enter. At the time, we bought other flights so they could give the concert in New York on the original date. They also missed it. They threatened to leave to South Korea again. The problem is, we had already bought more than 45,000 in merchandise to be able to fulfill the fans. So we bought other flights and in the end, we bought three times the flights. We have spent a lot of money on your logistics on Spire's whims. We would like to extend our sincere apologies to Omega X fans. We have had days of uncertainty, but Spire Entertainment has a contract with us for the US tour and rights to the merchandise, etc. We have clear conversations and contracts as many companies and we will see this through to the end as a registered company in the United States of America. In Atlanta, Spire Entertainment did not want members to take selfies. Thanks to all the people who attended the first three concerts, but the outrage and uncertainty is over. And if you thought the rest of the concert would play over smoothly, then you would be greatly mistaken. On October 10th, Spire announced that Taedong would not be participating in their Chicago concert due to mild health concerns. This would make him the sixth member to sit out of one of their concerts during this tour. The tour finally came to an end at their LA stop on October 22nd. Near the end of the show, the members each gave a speech to their fans. 
One of the members, Hang Yum, left the crowd with some encouraging words. I came to LA three years ago. Time flies so fast. A lot of things have changed, but it remains in my head. So I want to tell you something. If you get her in your life, get cursed by someone, tell somebody. Please tell, tell somebody. If you handle it alone, it will eat you up. And it will stay in your head. Will you give me a chance to protect you? This was a heartwarming message, but soon had a different meaning hours later. The night was filled with cheers and laughter, and many fans went home with a smile on their face. On the surface, this looked like a great way to end the tour. However, this would soon turn into a night that no one would forget, and for all the wrong reasons. Before we begin this next segment, I must introduce you to Spire's higher-ups. The original CEO of Spy Entertainment was believed to be Hwang song woo Somewhere between the conception of Omega X till now, the CEO position has been switched off to Kang song hee This was also backed up by a few netizens as they read the notes in Omega X's swim album. In the past few days, internet sleuths obtained pictures of Hwang song woo and Kang song hee in pictures together in unprofessional settings, such as on vacation. It is believed that these two are married. Now that you know who they are, let's move on. Just hours after the LA concert ended, a fan took to Twitter to share a horrifying scene that they just witnessed between the members of Omega X and their female CEO. The post reads, Guys, I was waiting for the Uber that I called outside and I saw the company CEO hitting the members. I really didn't know what to do since my hands were shaking so much. They were being hit right in front of me, but I couldn't do anything. In this post, they also included audio of what they witnessed. <laughs> Immediately, the video began to spread in the K-pop community and to the rest of the world. The hashtag ProtectOmegaX began to trend as fans and netizens voiced their concern for the members. As more fans heard the horrific abuse, other fans who attended the other tour dates began to speak out about what they witnessed, and this goes all the way back to their South American leg of the tour. On October 4th, another Twitter user posted a thread reporting that her mother witnessed members of Omega X being yelled at by a woman more than once at the airport. They said, My mom was in Chile for holidays, and she was coming back on Monday but the flight got canceled so she had to stay in the hotel, where Omega X were staying as well. When she was having breakfast, she saw two boys, members of Omega X, that were being yelled at by a woman, who she believed is a manager or something like that. She thought that maybe they were celebrities because they had their faces all covered up with caps and masks, so then she found out that they were from a K-pop group called Omega X. After that, she saw them again at the airport while waiting for the flight. And then the same woman was yelling at them in front of everyone. My mom and her friends couldn't believe it and she told the woman to stop yelling at them. Then the woman left and nothing else happened, but she told me the members bowed at her as a thank you. When I heard about it, I was really stunned and my mom told me she felt really bad for them. They look very respectful and kind. I really can't believe how the company doesn't do anything about this and I also read about the situation with, with their tour. My mom told me to make a complaint to the company because they cannot be treated like this. I'm not familiar with the group so I don't know what to do exactly, but I wanted to let the fans know about this. The same day, another user made a post where they captured a woman, believed to be the CEO, I can't say for certain, throwing a tantrum in front of the staff after Omega X's New York concert. Another person who volunteered for their South American tour also made a few posts on Twitter. This user volunteered at their Colombia and Chile shows and said the treatment was worse. Another user talked about a situation that happened at one of the hotels they were staying at during their North American leg. Recently, a K-pop boy group stayed at one of my family's hotels for one of the shows earlier in their US leg of the tour. 
For many reasons surrounding privacy and policy, I cannot give out much information or specific details, but I'm sure you can pick up on who I'm talking about with the details I do share. This situation started because there were multiple hotel guests and other hotel staff that were concerned about the well-being and safety of the group of guys that were described to be Korean. I had no idea this group was staying at my family's hotel until my mom spoke to me about it on the phone and I sort of pieced pieces together. The receptionist working that night was fairly new to the job and ended up calling my mom to come to defuse the situation since none of the current efforts seemed to be working. According to the reports and complaints made by the other hotel guests and staff, and along with the video footage I saw and sent to the company, a woman was yelling and being extremely verbally aggressive and physically aggressive towards a group of younger men. The man with red hair was seen having his chest jabbed at multiple times while those beside him tried to shield him in a way, and an older man from another room heard the commotion and tried to intervene because of how concerning and fast the situation was exceeding, but two other guys part of the group stepped aside and the man left. Later, the older man ended up telling the receptionist and my mom that the two members asked him not to interfere. In case it made the situation worse, the older man of course was still worried and stated that it was a horrible and heartbreaking sight to see since they were visibly crying and not able to fight back. Because the situation got physical and multiple complaints and reports were made, my mom had threatened to have the police called on her and had to step in. The only reason I saw the video footage, because I was the one who had to contact the company this party was booked under and even then, the communication was frustrating. Who in their right mind says, we will discuss this issue further at our convenience. After some short time, there was a statement made about an entertainment company no longer being associated with them, so I genuinely thought things would get better for them. And on my family's end, after the case was disputed, there was nothing we could do, and my family has always prioritized the safety and well-being of all guests, so please know that efforts were made to put in place to try and keep this group separated from her during their short stay in our city. However, those efforts were deemed useless because she still went and banged loudly on the relocated rooms, and I'm unclear on this part, but according to what a staff member said, it looked like the same woman from the night before was trying to take away the food a member was eating. Now that this situation caught more attention, Spire Entertainment were forced to respond. Hello, this is Omega X's management, Spire Entertainment. First, we would like to sincerely apologize for causing you concern with the recent news. As of October 22nd, Omega X completed their first world tour, Connect, Don't Give Up, in Los Angeles. Following the month-long tour which began in Guadalajara, Mexico on September 16 and ended in LA, US on October 22nd, we had a celebratory team-wide dinner. The conversation which had circulated online via social media was recorded at the dinner. At the time, having completed all legs of the tour, the Omega X members and Spire Entertainment team were discussing the hard work that went into the concerts as well as the future that is to come. During this discussion, we also talked about certain moments that caused disappointment in one another, and in doing so, the conversation got heated and voices were raised. Please note that we kept communicating after dinner, and Spire Entertainment and the members have since resolved all hard feelings. We have concluded to continue moving forward together, all while being more considerate towards one another. While we have tried everything in our power to keep our promises with the fans, we apologize for having caused such concern in the end. A fan who stayed at the same hotel as the group in LA also reported what they witnessed of the situation. No, because was it really resolved? Because when we came down from our room last night to get water, Hungin was sitting in the lobby with the manager like he was in timeout. Mind you, 2.30ish in the morning. So was it resolved? We did not see what happened, just saw him, and it was very tense and awkward atmosphere. All of these situations have happened in very public places and makes fans worried what else may be going on behind the scenes. As more information began to unfold, fans were made aware that the boys' flights back home to Korea were cancelled by the company. On October 23rd, one of South Korea's biggest broadcasting stations, SBS, covered the Omega X situation and were able to get in contact with the CEO over a phone call. Reportedly, Omega X were originally booked to fly back to Korea on October 23rd. However, following the online circulation of multiple allegations against the company's CEO, SBS News confirmed that the tickets were cancelled early that morning. In addition, SBS News confirmed that the production staff boarded the flights back to Korea while the members remained in Los Angeles. Due to the sudden change in schedule, Omega X fans expressed concern about the members' safety. Kang So Hee, CEO of Spire Entertainment, told SBS News that the flight schedule had been subject to change for the past three days. 
The management claims that the tickets were cancelled in order to prevent fans from sitting with the members. When asked about the initial audio that went viral, Spire claimed the situation all started because of an anti-fan. It's a one-sided allegation started by an anti-fan who is hostile towards the management. I was exhausted because I've been up for several nights in a row. I even had a bloody nose because I was so tired. But the members didn't think to make me feel better. They didn't care about me, so I felt upset and acted out of disappointment. Usually, I'm extremely polite towards the members. I even use honorifics when I talk to them. On the afternoon of October 24th, SPS Entertainment News released a video containing the situation at the time. The violence and assault that started on the street continued in front of the hotel elevators. <laughs> Video, CEO Kang Sung Hee is heard shouting at the group before Jae Han sits down on the ground, seemingly suffering from a panic attack as she mocks him. The members do their best asking her to stop repeatedly, but after multiple attempts to calm the situation down, she seemed to get angrier. <laughs> was nowhere near finished when they returned to their hotel. Still furious about how the members never took care of her the way they did for Jaehan, she seemingly grabbed him as he entered the elevator, causing him to stumble. Fortunately, he was caught by his members. Jaehan seemed not to be able to stand up on his own after that and was held by his members. As Jaehan was now in the elevator, Kang Sung Hee tried to push herself into the elevator with him but was physically blocked by one of the members. SBS News also exposed additional recordings from their exclusive phone conversation with the CEO. Fans were devastated to see the abuse the group suffered at the hands of the company and how they continued to downplay and deny the situation. In spite of what had been captured on video, Kang Sung Hee insists that she has never abused the members. I was only asking them if they ever thought to care of me when I was feeling down or when I was passed out. I was struggling too. Me abusing the members? No way. Not only had the CEO been allegedly abusive to the members, but the staff had also shown rude behavior to the boys and the people around them. On October 26, Chilean K-pop journalist Rebecca Medina took to Twitter to expose how the management allegedly treated the translator hired for the group's September concert in Chile. According to the reporter, the translator was only paid 3 out of the 10 hours she worked. She also added that the Korean staff was xenophobic towards the translator and allegedly repeatedly told not to interact with the boy group despite it being her job to translate for them. The situation continued to escalate when a female manager grabbed the translator roughly by the arm and saying, we need to talk. Through the exchange, the members were condescending and talked down to the translator. The alleged verbal abuse was so bad that it brought the translator to tears. In addition to the translator's horrible experience, the reporter also mentioned that the K-pop Chilean official team, a Chilean K-pop news source, were also heavily mistreated by the Korean staff. This further proves to netizens that the entire company needs to be under investigation. On the morning of October 24th, the 11 members of Omega X and the members boarded the plane to Korea. According to SBS News, the members were reportedly forced to purchase their own flight tickets back home, using their own money, and some of the members had to have their parents help them with the cost. The cheapest flight from LA to Seoul the next day was 675 USD. The cheapest non-stop flight was around 920 USD. On October 25th, all the members returned safely to Korea with their manager. About 100 fans waited for the members at the arrival hall and burst into tears sobbing outside the airport. Jae Han, one of the members known to be allegedly assaulted by the CEO, only nodded at the support of his fans with his head down. At the airport, the boys were met by an older man and an older woman. There has been many questions as to who they are. Some believe they are family members. The man has also been speculated to be Chairman Hwang Song Woo. No one is certain as to who they are. Since the situation in LA, the CEO continues to act like the victim in all of this. Netizens on Twitter have shared now-deleted posts from CEO Kang, hoping to expose her true character. In a separate post, she also criticized an unnamed member of Omega X for sending him flowers to her father's funeral. 
One of the members once said, The flowers I sent to your father's funeral were a lot of money for me. So I told him, If your first thought is money when you're sending flowers, I didn't want those kind of flowers. Everyone who came to my father's funeral would have seen me working on my laptop, even if I was preparing for my dad's funeral, because I wanted to take responsibility for the American tour. If I hadn't finished it then, this tour probably wouldn't have happened. SBS also reported that netizens have also accused the CEO of allegedly making rude comments to Jaehan and Yechan's female co-stars. In May, Spire announced that two Omega X members were cast in a new BL web drama titled A Shoulder to Cry On. According to a fan, the CEO allegedly had rudely warned the actresses not to flirt with the boys. Now that the members are back in Korea, fans were worried that the company would not cancel their work schedules. Currently, Omega X have a weekly scheduled neighbor vibe party room every Thursday. Every week, members of the group talk about different topics. They also use this time to interact with fans live. On October 26, neighbor vibe informed fans that their weekly shows would not be held but would return the week after on November 3rd. Fans are rightfully upset that they are not given more time to heal and actually deal with the situation. Many fans feel like this is just another way Aspire trying to sweep this issue under the rug. As more time passes, fans are suspecting the members are currently banned from social media. However, Seven has seemed to find a loophole as an old picture of himself was posted on Snooper's official account. Snooper is an inactive band that Seven is a part of. Fans believe that it was Seven himself who made the post to show fans that he is okay. And if not him, then it was Snooper's leader trying to show his support. No one is certain who posted it or the reason, but as of now, the post is deleted. This would not be the first time Omega X has been banned from posting online. Earlier this year, fans grew concerned the boys were under a social media ban when the members stopped posting frequently. According to fans, the boys are known to post daily, yet there was no updates for over a week. One of the members, Hui Chan, attempted a hold of VLive 12 times, but each attempt was forcibly ended after 10 seconds. On the same day, Hui Chan made a post on the fan cafe saying, For the fans who trust us, follow us, and side with us, we're going to keep going for 4 axes, so please don't change. No matter what happens, we're going to overcome it. We can, we can, like we always have, will prevail. And no matter what happens in the future, we're going to stay by the fan side. We're never ever going to hurt them again, no matter the reason. Since the deplorable actions Aspire have been exposed to the world, many fans and people who have worked with Omega X are calling out the company and standing with the group. Dong Kyu, who is Jaehyun's former Spectrum member, made a post aimed at Spire CEO. You're probably the anti. I won't curse you out here since I've already done it a lot vocally. How dare you to my Dong Sang? How dare someone like you? Taeung, Seven's leader in an inactive group snooper, also came to his fellow member's defense, posting the hashtag ProtectOmegaX on his Instagram story. Solo artist Saudi, a former 14U member, also showed his support on Instagram. As of the recording of this video, there is an active petition going around that is requesting the Korea Creative Content Agency, Seoul Metropolitan Police Agency, the Board of Directors Fire Entertainment, and the Los Angeles Police Department to launch an immediate investigation into the alleged physical, verbal, and emotional abuse of the members of Omega X. Fans also created a few email templates you could use to send to Spire Entertainment, the South Korean Embassy, and the Korea Culture Center of LA. Omega X's fandom also created several fan projects and hashtags to show their support and spread awareness. Here is a list on screen. Also, don't forget to let the members know you care and support them by leaving messages on their fan cafe. The links to all these resources will be pinned in the comment section and at the top of my description. The entertainment industry is a brutal environment, and this case only shows a small window into what happens behind the scenes. Stories like these make it hard to believe that the people in the industry will change. It seems like every year we get new horror stories of companies committing heinous acts against their artists and taking advantage of them. I want to be proven wrong, so let's push for change. No one deserves to be treated the way the members of Omega X were. They already had a rough path before re-debuting. The future of Omega X is currently uncertain, and I hope with enough voices, this news gets a lot more attention and the boys receive justice. Also, please be cautious of what you read or hear online. A lot of people are using this situation to gain clout and report false information. 
Also, if I reported anything incorrectly, please politely correct me in the comments. Also, before I end this video, I'd like to thank Omega X Worldwide on Twitter for also helping me with resources on how we can help the group. Don't forget, links to the petition, email templates, and more resources will be in the description or pinned comment. And with that being said, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.